I suffered tremendously from the lack of sleep and the tremendous coughing. Terrible. And also, you couldn't eat properly. You're just a very poorly man. The only way I could sleep was I would get up in the night and I'd go and I'd sit in a recliner chair in the lounge. And that was the only way I could get sleep. And this went on for eight months. Mm, I would think so. Before I actually yeah. found myself on the tabby path. I didn't know there was anything wrong with me at all. I was away in the Lake District on a walking bridge weekend and had a really, really bad night with awful chest pains, which went on for two or three or four hours. I didn't even go out very much because I just didn't have the, uh, shall we say, the get up and go to go any length of walk. Might walk down the street a few yards, but then I would, I would soon come back again and come back into the house and sit in my chair. And I suppose this went on for quite some time. I was shocked that there was anything wrong with me because I thought I was reasonably fit, had an active life, you know, played golf, everything. So I came home, I drove back and spoke to a doctor friend of mine who said, I think you should go down to A&E. They put me in a wheelchair and didn't let me walk again until they'd done all the tests. And that's when I found out that uh, I had something wrong with my aortic valve. Welcome to this video introduction to your transcatheter aortic valve implantation which from here on, we'll just call TAVI. The cardiologists who carry out the TAVI procedures are committed to improving the service that's provided to their patients. We hope this video helps prepare you for your TAVI journey. So the aortic valve is the structure which separates the heart from the rest of the body. And that valve um, is a sort of thin uh, three leaflet very thin leaflets, kind of like rose petals. And it's supposed to open to let the blood out of the heart and then it's supposed to close to stop blood falling back in. Aortic stenosis is a common condition, particularly in older people, but not always, where the aortic valve, which is the main valve through which the heart pumps blood to the body, has become narrowed and restricted so that it's not opening properly to let the blood out. The most common symptom um, by far is breathlessness. Less common is chest pain uh, and occasionally dizziness or lightheadedness when patients are walking or trying to exert themselves. Occasionally people present with a collapse or a blackout and sometimes pe patients present really very unwell with advanced breathlessness and symptoms of heart failure. After the symptoms present and the doctor notices a heart murmur, usually with the stethoscope, then that leads to an ultrasound scan of the heart or echocardiogram. And it's that that's the key test in making the diagnosis of aortic stenosis. This places jelly on the chest and uses uh, the sound waves to assess the opening of the aortic valve. Now, if you've got any questions about things, then obviously feel free to ask any member of the TAVI team and we'd be more than happy to help answer them. The aortic valve is the main valve through which the blood passes as it leaves the heart. It opens with every heartbeat to allow the blood to pass through and then closes to prevent blood flowing the wrong way round the system. In aortic stenosis, the valve leaflets become thickened and deposits of calcium form on them. This restricts the leaflet opening and limits the flow of blood through the valve. So TAVI can be performed via a number of different access routes. Most commonly it's performed through an artery in the leg, Sometimes it's performed through an artery in the neck or through a space between the ribs. The most common way we perform TAVI is through the artery in the groin. Using local anaesthetic to numb the area, we make a very small nick in the skin and then pass the tube and the TAVI valve up through the main artery to the heart. So the TAVI valve is passed through the narrowed aortic valve. The valve is then deployed the frame expands and pushes the narrowed leaflets aside. This restores normal valve function and improves blood flow to the body. TAVI is a treatment that's developed really only in the last 10 to 15 years as a way of treating aortic stenosis without the need for open heart surgery. Unlike an open heart surgery, we don't take out the old valve and stitch in a new one. We put a new valve inside the old narrowed valve. So 
So as with any invasive procedure, complications can occur with TAVI. The risk of serious complications is actually very low and is falling year on year as techniques and technologies improve. The actual risk for an individual patient varies from person to person and the risk for you will be fully discussed with you by a member of the team. I think the important thing to remember here though is that the risk of not treating the valve and the harm associated with that is much higher in general than the risk of uh, complications from the procedure itself. You should receive your admissions letter. This is an important document, so please read all the information carefully and follow any instructions. Admittance and preparation ahead of the procedure needs to be right, and this can take time, so bring a good book for any unforeseen waiting times. There are lots of reasons why timings can change, like emergencies and bed pressures. We know this can be frustrating, but be assured you will be kept informed. Once I've been given a date, uh, I was only given a few days notice and I was to come, I think it was the 5th of September. I was told that procedure would take place the next day. There was, there was a wait, a wait for the bed because obviously a lot of people were having day procedures. So I was waiting around on the ward for perhaps an hour, an hour and a half. But I had someone with me, so we chatted and watched and looked to see what was going on. The difference between a general anaesthetic and, and, a, and conscious sedation is general anaesthetic means you will be put to sleep um, and you will have a tube that is used to do the breathing for you. For the conscious sedation, it means exactly what it says, so you will be conscious at that time. So it's a medicine that we give you into the vein in your arm, which makes you feel a little bit sleepy and um, a little bit kind of dozed. Um, some patients, because you haven't had anything to eat or drink, often nod off. Um, but it's easy to wake you up and check that everything's okay and inform you of anything we're about to do um, and of course let you know when we are nearly done. So there uh, are a couple of factors uh, as to why some patients have a general anaesthetic with an anaesthetist or a conscious sedation procedure. Usually it all leads back to what's the safest for the patient. So when you come into the cath lab for your procedure, you'll be greeted by a number of people. They all have different jobs that they do individually. When you are lying on the table, uh, you will have someone, either a nurse or an anaesthetist, who will be there to talk to during the procedure. I'm the physiologist, I'll be monitoring your heart today. I'm a sedation nurse and I will be making sure you're comfortable during the procedure. I'm one of the consultants, I'll be performing your procedure today. And I'm the second consultant, we'll be working together to do this procedure today. I'm the circulating nurse and I assist the scrub nurse. I'm the scrub nurse, I'll be helping the doctors with the procedure today. I'm the radiographer for controlling the x-rays. Okay, so where you're laid now is perfect. There shouldn't be anything digging into you. There's some wires that are attached to you, and um, the warm and blanket underneath you, but um, this is how we would like you to lay. The camera's gonna come quite close to your face. It's gonna come up and down and you're going to move around but it won't hit you. So now we're going to pop a little cannula in your arm. So I'm going to take your arm out to your left hand side. It's going to be a sharp scratch just for the medicines that I need to give you. So the doctor's just getting ready now. These drapes are going to come all the way down your body. We're going to pop the local anaesthetic in the top of the leg, it's going to sting before it goes numb but it'll make everything nice and numb and then uh, I can give you a little bit more medication here just to make you comfortable. Okay. 
So now we're getting started with um, putting the sheets in the tops of your legs. So the little tubes that are going to pass in the top of the leg, um, there's going to be some firm pressure with the doctor's hand on and off. So now you're going to feel some firm pressure on the top of the, the right leg. That's going to be the big sheet that helps us deliver the valve all the way up to the heart. Um, but we're going to ask you not to tense your bottom if you can avoid it and try not to hold your breath. It just makes it that bit easier for you. So we're at the part where we're going to put your valve in. The doctor's going to press really firm on the top of your leg um, and we're going to put the, the delivery system in that's going to deliver your valve all the way up to the heart. Um, when we do this, you might just feel that back pain again, a little bit of pressure. I'll give you a little something just now just to relax that. Um, and uh, when we put the new valve across the valve, you might just get a little bit of a dizzy sensation. It won't last very long and you might just feel us speeding up your heart a little bit. Great, and we're in the working view, Sarah. Yeah. Perfect, okay. All right, so the ready call it, Mike? Yeah, I'll call it, okay. 180. Yeah, pace on 180, Adam. It's 180 there. Okay, balloon up, Dan. Yeah, balloon up. Okay, inject. Injecting. Down. Pacing off. Stored it. Right. Stored. Sorry, got it? Well, Great. Good. Christine, you happy with the pressures? Yep, everything looks good. So the valve's all in, so we have one last little job to do. It takes 10 minutes. We're going to take the tubes out the top of the leg. It's going to be some firm pressure just to get that hole all sealed up for you. And then we can get you back on your bed and we're all done and we can go back to the board. Generally, once we've got the new valve in, we'll be able to say to you straight away, the new valve is in, it's working well. And that's when um, the main part of the procedure is done. And that's, you, the patient themselves will really not be aware that there's been that change until after the procedure when you'll notice the difference. And usually patients, as soon as they get up and about after the procedure, will notice considerable difference in symptoms. Able to breathe more easily, able to walk more easily, able to exercise better, and all those symptoms that were causing trouble before the procedure should be completely gone. I came in on a Monday evening, had the procedure the next day, was in the ward for 24 hours, was up dressed, and the sister came and she said, when are you leaving? I said, I've organised a taxi for this evening. I'll get you a taxi now, he said the sister. <laughs> and sure enough, taxi appeared within an hour and I was on my way home. I felt elated, I felt relieved, obviously I felt relieved because we all do if we've been through anything that's slightly or very different from anything we've experienced before. Um, and surprised, actually. I think I was very lucky. Everything must have gone very smoothly because I was back in the ward very quickly. I was told in advance that once the, uh, the surgeon had made, the valve had been connected, that I would immediately feel better. And I did. When I was feeling, being wheeled back up to the wards, I could have got out of the trolley and walked back. I was just better. Once the procedure is complete, you'll be moved to a heart monitored bed, where you'll be cared for by a nursing team. Please note that these wards can be mixed sex. We know recovery and rehabilitation depends on the individual person, but there are some similar experiences you can expect once you discharge from hospital. Following your procedure, you'll be taken to one of our monitored beds where you'll have to lay flat for a certain amount of time, usually about four to six hours. After that, you'll be sat up, you'll be able to eat and drink and see your family members. We'd like to get you moving as soon as we can, and this could be in the evening of your procedure, or it could be the following day. You'll be connected to some heart monitors after your procedure, but we'll encourage you to mobilise around the ward. The quicker you get up and about after your procedure, the quicker you tend to go home. We're trying to get a lot of people home the day after procedure, but some people are needing to stay for a couple of days more. I was only in hospital overnight. I suppose one of the things is that you have to lie flat for four hours um, without moving. And I tell you, I was watching the clock going round, waiting for four hours so that I could go to the loop. But other than that, there is no, uh, nothing to worry about um, afterwards. It didn't seem so to me. And obviously when they say you can get up <clears throat> and you can go to the bathroom, you feel a bit kind of, hmm, am I going to be all right? And, and that goes on a bit, to be honest. Am I going to be all right? My initial uh, 
symptoms. I just suffered from a lack of sleep, suffered from being able to sleep, suffered from the fact that I couldn't lie down flat in the bed. An incessant coughing. And the coughing, mm. lack of breath. And the first night at home, I went to my bed and just had a good night's sleep. Got up the following morning and got on with my life. And for the last two years, that's how it's been. You may feel tired when you get home after your procedure and we recommend that you take it easy for the first couple of weeks and start gradually building up your exercise afterwards. You don't need to have somebody with you 24 hours a day following a TAVI procedure. On discharge, you could go home and be independent in your own home environment. Some patients worry whether they might dislodge the valve and that's definitely not going to happen. Every patient is different and everybody has different concerns and questions and that's what we're here for throughout your journey. If you've got any queries, don't hesitate to call us. When you go into a TAVI procedure, it's often quite a scary thing for patients. You know that you've got a serious heart condition that's been affecting your quality of life and you're coming into hospital to have you know, a big procedure with some risks, albeit small, but ones that you know, have been explained to you. I think what we can say to patients is that it's a procedure that you'll find a lot less invasive, a lot less troublesome than you might imagine, that you'll, in most, the vast majority of cases, come through the other end and say, crikey, you know, that was really so much easier than I was expecting it to, to be. And patients say to us all the time that they can barely believe that they've gone through the procedure. Uh, they'll be sitting up, eating their meal, uh, having a cup of tea, it is a big procedure, but it's a fantastic procedure. It'll change your quality of life. Uh, and we hope and we believe that it's a procedure you'll get through uh, easily and comfortably. I feel very proud and privileged to work within the TAVI service. It's one of the highlights of my job, really, to see patients who are so ill and so limited by their symptoms, transformed by the procedure. And so many patients, when they come back, tell us how much better they're feeling and how much more they can do. And it really is very satisfying. I mean, I think TAVI is the amazing procedure of cardiology that's happened in the last sort of 20 years. And I feel privileged to, to be working in a time when TAVI went from a, a niche procedure that was only done in very rare ultra high risk patients to a procedure that, you know, we are doing in high numbers. And it's really good old fashioned medicine. We, we take patients who've got really bad symptoms, we get to know them, by and large, we make nearly all of them a lot better. The patients are incredibly grateful, and it's a really rewarding thing for a doctor to do. It's been my privilege to watch it grow. Very, very first thing was lifting the kettle, because one of the things that you are told is don't lift anything. Whatever you do, don't lift anything. Um, so the first time that I um, filled the kettle up, I switched it back on, I thought, yeah, we're on the way. Well, it was just great. And I felt that my life was going to be just as normal and I'd be able to do, within reason, things I'd done before. I had great confidence in the Tavi. Now I've got back to doing the things that I like doing because I've always had a pretty busy life and I've always liked to go out and about. So now I'm playing golf again very, very badly, but nonetheless I can get around 18 holes. Anyone who's contemplating having a TAVI procedure, I would thoroughly recommend it to you. There is absolutely nothing to be, to be worried about, because I have never had any twinges or anything of that ilk. Everything just is in there and working. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please raise them with the Tavi team.